peace and blessings be unto you, beloved, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Oh yes, the real Jesus the Christ, the Redeemer of all mankind, the Savior of every living soul. I am so glad to be in a position and in the right posture to minister to you in this moment in time. I welcome you here to God Core TV, and this is our God Core Wordcast here on the God Core TV Broadcasting Network. I am J.E. Cooper, a.k.a. B.B.J., and I'm honored to be your host with the most full of the Holy Ghost. Well, let's get right into this God Call Word cast session. There, there's a few things I believe Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKadosh, has impressed upon my heart to share with you. Let's go to the Word of God. You know, we here at God Core TV believe in the word of God. We stand on the word of God uh, for the word of God is our foundation. Is the word of God your foundation? Oh, that's awesome. Listen, th th there's no, no greater foundation than God's holy word. And so we stand on it. By the way, if you have not already kingdom connected, I want to personally invite you to subscribe right now to God Core TV. Come on, subscribe. It's for free. You know, it only takes a moment. Just just simply click on subscribe on God Core TV right here. Come on. G-O-D-K-O-R-E-T-V. You can't go wrong. And also, uh, go ahead and click on that notification bell so that you can be notified when we send out content such as this. I'd love for you to be a part of our God Core TV community as well as our God Core family. Would you like to do that? Well, come on, become a partaker. We'd love for you to be a family member. All right, let's get to the word. Hallelujah. The Bible says that man can't just live by bread alone. You know what I mean? But, but man must live by every word that proceedeth out from the mouth of God. So we're looking at 1 John chapter 4. And the Bible says this. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hmm. I'm going to pump the brakes right there. Because what I want to share with you is very important. I need you to listen now. It is a word of warning. It is a 911 cold red alert. Beloved, be careful who you accept or embrace as a man or a woman of God in this season. For as the Bible clearly states, we ought to be trying these spirits. And the reason why is we're not sure what type of spirits we're dealing with. Being spiritual beings, you know, it's you know, it, it, it always sounds great and, and, and marvelous to hear somebody talking about God. You could be in the grocery store. You could be at the gas station. It doesn't matter where you are, library, anywhere. You hear somebody talking about Jesus. You hear somebody talking about Yeshua. You hear somebody talking about Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, Ruach HaKadosh. You hear somebody talking about the word of God. Somebody talking about having faith. Automatically, you engage and listening to the conversation because we are spiritual beings. And if by chance you profess to love God or profess to be born again or profess to be part of the body of Christ, of course, we love hearing about God. We love hearing about the word. But listen, just because everybody running their mouth about God don't necessarily mean that their feet are following. I often say this, words 
are always on sale because talk is that cheap. People can say anything and basically you got some people who could sell you anything. Some folk could sell you the enamel off your own teeth. Now you say, how are we going to do that, man of God? You'd be surprised. People are real slick with it. They got the gift of gab and you know what I'm saying? And they, you know, they, they got that, they got that communication swag. A lot of people are charismatic. You know, they, they you know, they're great articulators and orators and they wow so many people with their great vocabulary and, you know, and, and, and resumes. Oh, forget about it. Resumes. Oh, they're, they're always super impressive. You know, I've, I've, I've gone here and I've done this and I've accomplished that. And I, I was over this and I'm over that. And people are like, oh, snap. Man, she done a lot of stuff. Man, dude as well. Oh, man, he, man, he's decorated academically. Wow, he serves on such and such board. Now, you know, that, that's impressive to people. Now, don't get me wrong. Education is very important. Very important. Communication is very important. Relationships are very important. But in this season, you have to be careful. The people that you're dealing with, especially when you allow people to, to, to speak into your life. People you call spiritual dads and spiritual moms. People you call pastor and this is my prophet, my apostle, my bishop, my pastor, my teacher, my evangelist. You have to be careful, beloved. Let me read the scripture again. First John 4 and 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit's whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. False prophets are at an all time high. False prophets are everywhere. They're serving in different capacities. And because so many of us have been conditioned to mastering church, we have no idea what kingdom is all about. We're totally, I mean, oblivious to the fact that the Bible is a book about a king and his kingdom. Christ is king, yes. And we, the global body of Christ, is his kingdom. The whole concept of kingdom is not just dying and going to a pie in the sky and, you know, and having a, uh, you know, j j just a, a sweet by and by moment. No, but it's all about bringing everything that's in heaven down here on earth. It's all about thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what it's all about. It's not about a whole lot of pomp and circumstance of man-made religious stuff, whole lot of programs and activities and this. And that's not what it's about. So many of us have missed it. We're focusing so much on trying to get buildings and we're not building people. And people are saying all kinds of stuff. They're prophesying to the hills. And, you know, everybody wants to hear, you know, what the prophet has to say, you know, whether that prophet walks in, you know, the office of, of apostle, uh, whatever, whatever, you know, prophet evangelist, pastor, whatever fivefold. The voice of the prophet, it, 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 you know, it is a voice that that scratches a lot of itching ears. No matter what type of minister. People still embrace that minister as the voice of God, the mouthpiece of God, the prophet. But what are they saying? Are they saying what thus saith the Lord? Are they saying what God has said? Are they releasing what God has instructed them to release? Being led by Ruach HaKadosh, Holy Spirit? Or are they releasing things based on what they want to release and what's in their spirit. Oh, I'm a problem, right? I know I am. After all, who wants to deal with truth nowadays? Especially when you could just receive anything from somebody who sounds good, even though they may not speak.
speak from the foundation of sound doctrine. Beloved, warning, time out. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether it is of God or not. You have to be careful, very careful. There's a lot of people say they believe God. I believe God. Oh, I'm, oh, I believe God. That, that, that God talk. You know, the God talk always sound good. Always sound good. But watch this. James 2 and 19 says this. Thou believest that there is one God. Watch this. Thou doest well. The devils also believe. Hmm. And tremble. But without no, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Now let's look at this. Thou believest there's one God. Do you believe that? There's one God. People say, oh, there's only one God. Even other faiths and other religions, people say, you, you know, there's only one God. There's a, you know, people say that, right? And it sounds like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You just feel like grabbing everybody in hand, regardless of what their their profession is. You just want to, you just feel like holding everybody in hand and saying, "We are the world, we are the children." You might even want to put on a sparkly glove. But beloved, believe not every spirit. The Bible says clearly here. Thou believest that there's one God. Thou doest well. That's nice. Mighty nice. <laughs> but then the Bible says the devils also believe and they tremble. So what does that mean, BBJ? That simply means we cannot be on the same plane as the devils. I mean, just about everybody, you know what I'm saying? You know, of course, there's some atheists and people don't believe in God. Yes, but, but there's a high percentage of people who you know and I know who are always talking about God and there's one God. There's but one God. And, and some people are foolish enough to believe that, you know, we all serve the same God, but, but not. That's not true. Warning, believe not every spirit. We, got, we, we all have family members that come together when we have family gatherings. They, they believe all this stuff. And you know, you got to kind of prompt yourself to deal with certain people because you already know what they're coming with. You, you, you got that family member or some, some friend of the family or somebody who's always going to be invited, who's going to want to debate about this and that. They're always going to want to go through scripture. They're going to want to compare, you know, tit for tat. You, you, you know those type of people. They always want to be, you know, the greater debater. Ain't nobody got time for that. We're living in a day and time where people are dying everywhere all the time. And you don't have to be sick to leave here. Huh? Listen to me. Even the devils believe there's one God and they tremble. So we got to do more than that. What do we do? Number one, we have to put action behind what we believe. The Bible says faith without works is dead. You know, even though the devils believe there's one God, they're not going to act like it and, and worship him. They're not going to act like it and live for him. No, they're devils. They're deceivers. And so every spirit that's not of God is a deceptive spirit. Every deceiver is of the devil. And you know people and I know people who are rocking with the devil's team. Let, let's just keep it a buck fitty. I don't care how cute she is. I don't care, you know, say how handsome he is, how smart they are, how, how much money they're making. I don't care about, you know, their positioning in this and in that, how popular they are. If they are being led by a, a, a spirit that's deceptive, then they are of the devil. And what? Come on, what communication, what fellowship, what relationship does light have with darkness? Who oh, am I in the word? Oh, this, this is why I'm a problem to a lot of people. Because see, I stay in the word. I'm not going to be preaching a whole lot of hot topics that, that people are talking about on their, on, on, on their podcast and on their, you know, their YouTube channel. I'm going to give you what thus saith the Lord. And I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep it coming. Regardless of uh, people, whether they want to hear it, whether they don't want to hear it, I'm going to keep on preaching and teaching and living in season and out of season. 
I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna break, I'm not gonna bend, I'm not gonna compromise my stance in God because I'm not gonna rock with the devils. I believe there's one God, but I believe in putting my action behind my faith because I know that faith without works is dead. So I can't just tote and quote the Bible. I've got to live it to give it. And you got to do the same thing if you are professing to be a follower of the true Christ. This is a warning. Believe not every spirit. Some of your pastors are not who you think they are. Some of your church leaders, ministry leaders, group leaders, some of your mentors are of the devil. You already know. Just come on. Just, just come on. Just, just be honest about it. And if you don't know, you need to get down on your knees. If your knees don't bend, you need to get some with W W forty W D forty whatever. That spray some of that that, that that stuff behind you, behind you. You know what I'm saying? Behind your knee, or spray it on your knee. And you know what I'm saying? And work that knee and, and bend your knees. Because some of y'all haven't bent your knees. Come on, some of y'all haven't bent your knees since you were you, since you were in a, a nursery school when you're trying to tie your shoe. People just don't pray no more. Now, you ain't got to bend your knees you, 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 just to pray, but you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to make a funny day. But anyway, some folk, they, they ain't even praying. Forget about bending your knees. They're they not praying at all. And if you if you ain't praying, then you playing. Because no prayer, no power. Little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. And you can't be weak in it or you're going to be weak in it. You need to be praying every day. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. A day is a day to give God glory. A day is a day to give God praise. A day is a day to repent and say, God, forgive me for my sins. Don't be all proud. Well, I don't sin. You know, I go to church. I, go, I was in church. I shout all yesterday. My ankles got swollen, but I had a good time. Oh, Bishop brought that word. It was a good, good service. What did he preach about? I don't know, but I so shouted. <laughs> oh, yeah. Got my shout on, and we went and got some chicken and ribs and things. We, well, we ate that. They had the buttermilk biscuit. Didn't they have a biscuit built? Yeah, they had a buttermilk biscuit. We are so, so, so unaware. The enemy is whooping upside so many of our heads. And we don't even know it. We don't even know it. But thank God for men and women of God who have surrendered to God and who have made up in their mind that come hell or high water, we're going to preach, teach, and live this kingdom gospel. We're not going to be caught up in churchological systematics, uh, you know, super sanctimonialism of man-made traditional. We're not going to do it. We're not going to take it. No, we ain't going to take it. We're not going to take it anymore. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. You can have all that religious stuff. Miss me with that. It's time to come out from amongst them. All that religious stuff, leave it alone. It ain't helping you. It ain't doing nothing for you. You need to get with the true and living God. You need to know who the Messiah really, really is. You need to say yes to Jesus. Yes to the, the real Jesus that is, Yeshua HaMashiach. You need to really surrender your will to the will of God because just because you've been going to church and going to a religious gathering, that does not guarantee your salvation and it does not grant you an easy pass into an eternity with God. You better listen to me, beloved. I know you got pastors and bishops and apostles. I know, I, and I know some people are like, what is he talking about? I got me a pastor. I'm, I'm at a good Bible teaching church. I, what is he talking about? I, I know some people like that. Not everybody, but there's somebody like that. You better listen. Yes, because when God gives you a huge vision, it's only huge because he has given it to you. And a lot of times you're trying to share something with people who you really want to be delivered, set free, healed, and empowered. But you know what I've come to realize? Over the years, I've tried to share vision with a lot of folk, and I've come to realize that 
People can make you feel like God ain't really tell you to do this or that. People have a way of making you even get into the place where sometimes it's like you're, you're almost doubting what you know God told you to do. You're almost doubting or questioning uh, who God has called you to be. Even in ministry, there's people that say, well, I don't think you're that. I don't think you're a minister. I don't think you're a pastor. I don't think you're a prophet. I don't think you're, I, well, I don't think you are, you are an apostle. I don't think you, I, I think you are this. I, I don't know if you're that. Who are you to decipher who God has called me to be? Who am I to decipher or to speak what God has called you to be? Unless Holy Spirit has revealed it to me through his spirit. But there's people who are caught up in this religious stuff where they feel that everything got to go through them and that they are the ultimate stamp on the authenticity of your vocation and the anointing thereof. But not so. You know why? Because if you were to drop dead right now and stand before almighty God, man, one of them folk would be standing nowhere around that throne. Nan one of them, they can't do nothing for you. Can't send a letter of referral. Can't, can't FaceTime. Uh, can't, can't, can't text. Huh? Can't Skype. None of that. Huh? It won't happen. That's why you have to make full proof of your calling, what God has called you to do. And if you're not sure, you need to pray. Seek God's face. Turn your plate over fast. And don't tell everybody you're fasting because we've been doing that wrong forever. The Bible says when you fast, you ought to wash your face. Don't walk around with your face all disfigured. <sighs> What's wrong with you, bro? Hey, you know I'm on a fast, man. Yeah, Bishop got us on a fast trying to make it. You're already defeated. <sighs> Ooh, girl, I'm telling you. What's wrong, sis? You know we are. You know we on that fast. And Bishop got us on a fast. Put us on a fast. You're defeated. There's no victory in that. The Bible says when you fast, wash your face. Don't disfigure your face as if you want somebody to give you some type of, you know what I'm saying, attention uh, because you're looking pitiful, because you want to have a pity party. There is no power or no benefit from that type of a fast. All you're doing is being defeated fast. That's, but what are we going to do? Are we going to follow the masses or are we going to follow the master? Huh. So we have to do more than the devils and just believe there's one God. We're going to have to put action with our faith and we're going to have to trust God. See, the devils can't trust God. You have to have a relationship with God to trust God. I'm going to do a teaching on that not long from now. Uh, the contrast between faith and trust. See, some people think it's the same thing, but I'm going, I'm going to do a teaching on that. We're going to have a God core word cast on that pretty soon, Lord willingly. Let's go to Hebrews. Are you enjoying this? If so, make sure you're sharing it with your family and your friends. Hallelujah. We're going to Hebrews 10 and 23. That's, that's chapter 10, verse 23. The Bible says this, let us hold fast. Watch this. The profession of our faith without wavering. Yeah. For he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Let us hold fast huh, to the profession of our faith. Let's look at that. What is profession? Well, the root word of profession is profess, and to profess is to state a claim or to declare something based on what you believe or your, your posture, your positioning, or your stance. So profession is the act of 
you know, uh, proclaiming something or declaring something into the atmosphere predicated upon what you believe or what you have been convicted by in order for you to stand on the foundation of that belief profession. So as born again believers, what do we profess? <laughs> we profess that, uh, that, 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 that Jesus is God. Jesus is God. Yes, Jesus is God. Did you not know that? Let's look at John. The gospel according to St. John, New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Let's go to John. John chapter one, verse one says this. It says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, we know there are all types of societies and groups in the earth. And some folk, uh, you know, they're animate about changing everything God has ordained uh, from the crack house to the White House. Uh, but listen, what God has established is truth. What others establish is untruth. So though a lawmaker can make a law in government and becomes the law of the land, it does not trump, no pun intended, uh, what God has already planned. Whatever God has established is what we ought to stand on and believe in. Are you following me? I'm talking about this warning of these false prophets and these spirits that have crept in unaware. The, the, these spirits that are not of God, that are holding hostage so many people in religious settings as well as political settings, even in the educational field. There are spirits that are of the devil uh, that are behind all type of philosophies and all type of teachings and presentations that should not be where they are. There are things in the school system that are uh, that, that's being presented to our children, our young boys and girls, that they should not be dealing with whatsoever. But when you have a perverted mind, when you have a perverted land and a perverted man or woman in command, then you're going to have a whole lot of perversion in the land. It is what it is. It becomes the way of life, but not for the righteous. Remember this. Don't you dare forget. Nothing but the righteous, nothing but the righteous, nothing but the right, the righteous shall see God, oh yeah, please believe it. <laughs> Listen, I know that threw some people off there. Wait a minute, BBJ just saying something. <laughs> Listen, to God be the glory for the great things he has done, all he is doing and all that he is going to bring to pass. You feel me? <laughs> so we know that Jesus is God. Matter of fact, it's an old saying, if you want something done right, you need to do it yourself. So God wrapped himself up in humanity, came down to deal with this whole sinful nature thing and this sin thing. He he he, he wrapped himself in in flesh and he walked the earth, hallelujah, as the one we reverence and honor as the redeemer of all mankind, Yeshua HaMashiach, the one the world know as Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, the Messiah. He did that. Huh? God did. Yes, yes. So we profess that he is God. What well, if we profess as believers that he is God, we ought to put action with our profession. What are you saying, man of God? I'm simply telling you that if you believe that Jesus is God, then you ought to know he has all power within him to do whatever he wants to do, however he wants to do it, with whomever he wants to do it with. Which brings me to the LGBTQ community. You religious folk who keep bashing and keep shunning and, and, and making mockery of the LGBTQ community. 
there's going to be hell to pay for you. Now, I know somebody said, wait a minute. BBJ is endorsing the LGBT community. You know what I am endorsing? I am endorsing salvation. I am endorsing God's way, not y'all's way. Y'all's way, not y'all's way. Some folk are so homophobic. Some folk are so shallow and so evil and so cold-hearted and so callous in in their heart that they're, they're, they're so insensitive and non-compassionate towards people, period. Then you look at the LGBTQ community and you treat them like trash. You talk about them like they trash. Let me tell you something. You're not God, my ninja. You're not God. I seen one preacher on, on, on YouTube, uh, and I believe he was addressing an individual who came into their gathering, so-called their church, as he says, his church, uh, and, and, and the individual was dressed in female attire, and the preacher, you know, put the individual on blast and said, wait a minute, you're a man. And you know what? You can't be up in here like that. Not in my church. That, that's what the preacher said. It's on YouTube. I don't know his name, but you know, it doesn't matter. God knows because God ha has him on his list. And no, you do know God, you do know God has a hit list and he has hitters on the earth. You, you do know that, right? He has a hit list and he has hitters on the earth. I, I happen to be one of his hitters. There are those two. It's not just me. It's not just me. He has several hitters on the earth. We're kingdom power movers. We, you know, we're about that kingdom life. We're not caught up in the churchological systematics. We're different. We're the ones that, 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 that don't fit in. You know, We're the ones who are awkward. We're different. We're peculiar. We're weird. We're not like the others. We're, we're not the ones that sit around and just look away and <laughs> like we don't see the sin. No, we cry loud and spin. We're the ones that are the problem in the earth for those who are in opposition to holiness. That's who we are. You feel me? Please don't get it twisted. And, and we bout that kingdom life. It's easy, my easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like that. So as I watched this preacher totally disrespect this individual, I begin to ponder on the whole, the whole situation and it just didn't seem right. Here is this individual coming into a place where that individual feels that maybe there's something there he or she needs. And Christ said it best. Those who are well don't need a physician, but those who are sick. So the house of God ought to be you know, that, that place that people can come into and receive the love of God, receive the power of God, re receive salvation in the name of God, receive the spirit of God. But what happens in all of these places across the country, you have these uh, so-called leaders when they're really spiritual bleeders. I talk about them all the time. You're in these places and you have a stronghold and you have a stronghold in church clothes. You're the ones who are hurting folk. You're the ones who are adding to the church hurt where people are coming in to receive something from God. This individual, and I don't know the I don't know the terminology, so LGBTQ, forgive me. I don't know all the terminologies, you know, pastors still studying, trying to learn more and more. I'm not gonna act like I know everything because I really don't. Uh, but but I, I don't wanna, you know, say the wrong thing. So, you know, I don't know all the terminologies, but this individual was a precious soul who came into this gathering thinking that there's something there to be received from God, only to be put on blast by the so-called pastor who simply said with a whole lot of boldness, a lot of carnality, a lot of fleshly boldness, this is my church, you ain't coming, you ain't coming up in here in my church, you gonna go back, if you go out, put on some man clothes and come back, but you ain't gonna sit up in here like this, this is my church and, and, and I'm not having it, and, and, and I, I, I'm the authority here. This is the problem. So many men and women have claimed these buildings as their churches, and now one of them died on Calvary. Woo! That a preacher apostle. Good God Almighty, great God from Zion. I'm telling you, it is true in this season, we're about to snip, 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 cut off a lot of people. Not because we want to be evil and wicked, but because where we're going, everybody can't go. People will not open their mouth. They won't tell the truth to save their soul. They're just sitting on their hands and looking around. 
You know when you see an injustice. Many of you, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, are sitting in these so-called church houses and, and, and you see the injustice against a lot of people, but you don't say nothing. Moses wasn't having it. Why are you having it? But you profess that, that Jesus is God. Bible says it's time for us to hold fast to the profession of our faith. In other words, don't just run your mouth. Talk is cheap. That's why words are always on sale. Don't just run your mouth. It's time to be about that life, that kingdom life. Come on, be part of the about it church. Rock with the about it bishop. Rock with the hip hop apostle who is hip to who God is and allowing everyone to have an opportunity to hop by having overcoming power. Why? Because we preach, teach, live, and give this gospel of the kingdom. It's not about us. It's all about giving glory to the most high God. That's what we're here for. In season, out of season, it's tight, but it's right. So you have to beware of these spirits and these false prophets and false apostles and all of these fake preachers and pastors and all these fake so-called saints who are really ain't. You see, the S makes the difference. If you're not saved, if you're not sanctified, come on, you, you ain't a saint. Ain't no S on it. You just an ain't. You need the S to be a saint. Without salvation, without sanctification, you just an ain't. And that's the problem because you ain't who you say you are. You're a fake. You're a false prophet. You're a false prophet. You're, you're, you're a false pastor. You're a false apostle. You're a false bishop. You're a false evangelist. You're a false teacher. You're just straight up fake. But you want to get the glory. I got news for you. Didn't come out the newspaper, mama used to say. God's hitters are being postured all over this land. And we're coming to deal with all of this buffoonery. We're coming to cry loud and spare not. And I'm gonna encourage all of, all, all of God's hitters, all you kingdom power movers, stop begging people to see what you see because they can't see what you see. They're blind, baby, they're blind, baby. Many times you're sharing an 8 by 11 vision with people who have 5 by 7 mentalities. They don't even have they don't even have the capacity to conceive what you're saying. Oh, I'm powerful because of the power of God on my life. It's not the power of Jarvis, it's the power of Jesus working through Jarvis. That's why I'm a problem. That's why many of your preachers and teachers, you be stuttering and, the, 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 and stammering and wasting time and bull jobbing and moving slow. I tell you what the vision is. I share with you. You say you agree, but then you move like a snail as if you have all day. What you don't realize is the time that you have is not what you really think it is. Time is of the essence. It's a 911 code red situation. You can leave here at any given time. Why are you wasting time to do the will of God? Here God has blessed you to kingdom connect with the realest and the illest on the planet, but you're moving like a snail. And you have every excuse in the world. When God sends you a gift, God in fact terminology, don't you disrespect that gift. You better embrace it. Male, female, boy, girl, whoever. When God sends you a gift, and it is a gift to bless you in the kingdom, you need to get on it and be generous in your handling and be careful in your handling. Because when the arc door shuts, there's no more conversation to be had. When the dust is shaken off of the apostles' feet, there, there are no more, can we talk about it again? Listen. If you believe Jesus is God, you need to act like it. Hmm. Now, what else do we profess as believers? What, what, what else do we profess? We profess that Jesus has all power. Mm -hmm. That's what we profess. We profess that. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Matthew 28 and 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power woo, is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Wait a minute. All power, Jesus? Come on, Yeshua. Come on, come. Bruh. All power? A-L-L. -L, all power. 
Jesus says, has been given unto me in earth and in heaven, in heaven and in earth. So that, that would encompass anything and all things. So he does have all power. But listen, if you profess to believe that Yeshua, the real Jesus, has all power, then why would you ever try to tap into any type of situation to be empowered besides Christ? Listen, Acts 1 and 8 says it quite plainly. Ye shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Holy Ghost power, we need it every second, every minute, every hour. We need the power of Ruach HaKadosh, Holy Spirit. We need the power of God because, because what? Huh? Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Come on, this, this racism thing, yeah, there's racism. This land, this land is, 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 is drowning in, in racism. But that's not the root of the situation. That's not the root of the problem. It is a spiritual thing. It is a spirit. There's a spirit behind racism. There's a spirit behind, you know, white supremacy. There's a spirit behind black supremacy. Hello. Listen, Christ died for all. He didn't just die for majestically melanated people. Yes, we are the chosen people, but Christ died for all. Remember, let me go to the word real quick. Let me, let me, let me go here. Because, you know, some people be, be on some, some stupid. You know, they, they be acting like they don't know because people don't read the word and because the word is not really being taught. And everybody is, is trying to get new stuff and get this and get that and get, get positioned so they can be rich and wealthy. But but the, the greatest wealth is, is the word of God. You can't be more wealthier than that, my friend. Not, not more wealthier than the word. You want to be wealthy? Get into the word of God. Seek the most high uh, for divine illumination or revelation of his word. Huh? So you can't you can't run all over the place trying to be a superstar and lead the masses with the kingdom message like this. It takes time to get into the word. It takes time to get into the presence of God because people need answers and they need divine guidance. In order to be a true leader in this dispensation of time, you have to honestly, I mean, be for real, for real, bruh. For real, sis, you, you, you have to spend time with God. And when you open your mouth, the anointing will flow and people will feel it. They will experience it and it will cause change within their life. But people are just popping it, popping their jaws. They just, he's saying anything. And people are like, oh, I know that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whole bunch of jokes and popping circumstances while people are dying out here without Christ. So this is what I want to bring to your attention. In the gospel according to St. John chapter 1 verse 11 says this. He came, now I'm talking about Christ. He came unto his own and his own received him not. Oh, that sounds familiar to any of y'all? Huh? Does that sound familiar? You know, to all, to all of my, you know what I'm saying, my woke brothers and sisters. You know, to all of my, you know what I'm saying, my chocolate city folk. You want everything to be black, black this, black that, black that. Okay. Well, the Bible says that Christ came unto his own and his own received him not. Why is it that when you come to your own, your own don't receive you? Hear the word of the Lord saying that a prophet is without honor in his own what? In his own country, in his own city, in his own town. What's, what that be about? Huh? It's the truth. It's always your people that give you the hardest time. But somebody else come in, come on. They're the greatest thing since sliced bread. You got no name preachers all over the country. I call them the no name preacher network. The powerful men and women of God, they just don't have big names. They don't have fame following them, but they have the anointing following them. Huh? And they're content with their kingdom assignment where they are assigned to. They may not be called to pass the millions of people, but they're okay with that. They're doing what God called them to do. Are you doing what God called you to do? Or are you chasing after somebody else's dream? Huh? Listen, you, you have to pursue your dream just like you got to pursue your calling. 
But your calling is more important than your dream. If you don't pursue your calling, just like if you don't pursue your dream, you'll end up making somebody else's come true and working their vision, their dream, working in their calling when you never answered yours. And that's a problem because when you stand before Almighty God, he don't care about how many phone calls you got, how, how many gigs and how many appointments and how many revivals you did, how many conferences you did. He's not concerned about that. What he wants to know is what did you do with the call of God on your life? He's he not going to be down for no excuses. Please believe me. So the Bible says he came unto his own and his own received the not. Uh, but as many as received him, watch this, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So that's just how it is. That's just the way it is. When you accept Christ, there are benefits. No matter what color your skin is. He wants you to surrender. Huh? He wants you to have that skin tone, the skin tone of obedience, the skin tone of his glory. That's what we all ought to have. We ought to have glory skin tone. That means when you see us, if we're professing believers, you ought to see the glory of God all over us. If we're going to shine, if we're going to glow, it ought to be the glow that flow because of Holy Ghost. It ought to be the glory of the Lord all over us. Yes. Back to the gospel according to St. Matthew. Chapter 28, verse 18, and Jesus came and said unto them, all powers given unto me in heaven and in earth. I, I reiterate, if you are professing that Christ is the one who possesses all power, then why are you seeking others to empower you? Now, God has given us pastors, according to Jeremiah 3 and 15, to feed us with knowledge and understanding. He's given us the fivefold uh, to be a blessing to the body of Christ. But we know that men and women have corrupted everything that God has established. Men and women have gotten to the place where they're super greedy and they began to make their own kingdoms and their own governments and their own things. It started when people start claiming the church, this is my church. And I'm in charge, just like that fellow on YouTube who was disrespecting that individual. I pray in the name of Yeshua that that individual will be uh, strong enough to go on and seek God like never before. Uh, here's a scenario. What if that individual was on the cusp of, of committing suicide? And, and, and that individual said, if I could just get somewhere where I could hear from God, that individual came into that gathering only to meet with a bulldog on some bull job. Uh, a spiritual idiot speaking uh, uh, ill things to that precious soul. See, Bible is right. The Bible says that man judgeth uh, from the outward appearance because man looketh on the outward appearance. But the true and living God, the Elohim of all creation, judgeth upon the heart. The Bible says that if you cry out to God, if you have a contrite heart, your broken heart, a contrite spirit, if you if, if you're despondent and you, you you feel hopeless and you cry out to God, He will answer your prayer. If you really want to be born again, you want to be saved from a life of sin. If you're confused in your mind and you need answers, only God can do it. Can't no preacher do it? Only God can do it. But once again, if you're coming into a place where you need to meet God. And you only meet foolishness and buffoonery and hate. What does that say about the body of Christ that lets me know that this presentation of the church, which is a presentation of buildings, not a presentation of building people, it is not of God. There's nothing wrong with gathering in a building. But who's the real church, the building or the people? This is a problem. Another profession is that Christ is our advocate. Let's look at this. First John 2 and 1. Let's look at this. First John 2 and 1. Let's look at this. First John 2 and 1. Are you enjoying this? I pray you are. And I pray that you will uh, continue to share 
with your family and friends, what we're doing here at God Core TV and here at the God Core TV Broadcasting Network. We're excited about what God is doing. Hallelujah. First John 2 and 1. And we find these words, my little children, these things I write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. So we find here in the first epistle of John, uh, chapter two, verse number one, these words, my little children. These things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Hallelujah. Verse 2 says, and he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of of the whole world. And hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Are you keeping them? Huh? Some people say, we ain't gotta keep no commandments. It's all good. All we gotta do is take communion every first Sunday. Not. We ought to be keeping the commandments. Yes. What you don't know? Yeah, we, we, ought, to, we ought to be keeping the commandments. Huh? Yeah. Bible says that he's our advocate. If anybody sin, listen, no matter what you're doing, it's nothing that God can't deal with. You just don't want to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. You don't want to blaspheme Roar Kakadesh. You don't want to do that. But there's no problem God can't solve. Hold on to the profession of your faith. If we believe that we have an advocate, it's just like having our own divine, you know, kingdom of Johnny Cochran, you know. Or our own divine kingdom, you know, saying uh, Robert Shapiro. But in this case, there's no greater advocate than Yeshua HaMashiach. Those are great attorneys in the earth. But but Yeshua HaMashiach, he, he, his, 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 his jurisdiction is all over and everywhere. He's not just confined to one city, one state, one government. But he is the government of all things. Hallelujah. So if we believe he is our advocate, he sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he maketh intercession for us. If, if he intercedes on our behalf, if he goes to the Father on our behalf, why are we always on the telephone? I mean the telephone, calling people with our problems. How come we're not going to Yeshua? How come we're not calling him? How come we're not leaving our burdens at his feet? How come we're always looking for somebody to fix us? In a fix up, how can we always run into some type of service and expect that some type of lion wonder to do something for us, to tell us something, to itch our ears, to scratch our itching ears? Bible says, Hold fast to the profession of your faith, beloved. If you believe Christ is our advocate, you need to seek Him more than you seek anybody. Are you, are you listening to me? Hmm. We believe he's our redeemer. That's, a, that's another profession. We believe he's our redeemer. He's our savior. We see that in, in, in this declaration that I'm about to read here in Romans. Very uh, familiar passage of scripture. Romans 10 and 9. We all know this. Who are of the household of faith. Romans 10 and 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Listen, Christ is the only answer and we should not be ashamed to let others know. Which brings me to this. When was the last time you shared your faith with somebody in your community? When was the last time you shared your faith with anybody? It seems to be a thing of old, a thing of the past. But that's a problem because I'm going to go back to this. Watch this. I'm, I'm going to go back to this scripture. There seems to be a problem somewhere. 
there's a disconnect somewhere because so many people focusing on doing church and having these events and having, you know, saying all of these gatherings, but something is missing here. I'm back at the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 says, and Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all power was given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now watch this verse 19. Watch this. Go ye therefore. That's a directive. That's an instruction. Go is the first word. Go out. Get out. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. No, just teach the people in the hood. Teach all nations. No, just teach the people in the suburbs. Teach all nations. No, just teach the rich folk. Teach all nations. No, teach the poor folk. Teach all nations. Not the LGBTQ. Not them. They, not, they, he don't mean them. Teach all nations. Nations deal with who you are and where you're from, what group you belong to, what ethnicity you belong to, who are you? All nations from all walks of life, whatever you see yourself as, whatever you identify as, all nations, God is not excluding anybody. The true spirit of inclusion is preaching the gospel of the kingdom to all nations. That's what inclusion really is. That's biblical inclusion. Meaning that everybody is included because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Don't matter how you look. Don't matter where you live. How much money you got. Don't matter what's your profession. It's all about your confession. What you confess will guarantee whether or not you'll be blessed. And I want to encourage you. I, I want to encourage you to confess what the Bible says in Romans 10 and 9. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart God hath raised him from the dead. The Bible says thou shalt be saved. Now listen, there's more to it. There's a life of sanctification. There's a life of holiness you ought to pursue. Holy Spirit is the power that you need dwelling on the inside of you so that you can deal with spiritual wickedness in high places. And these spirits that have crept in unaware, you'll have discernment that'll be sharp, that you will know when you're dealing or when you're engaging with or when you're faced with the okie doke or not. You'll know whether it is of God, that spirit, or whether it is of garbage. And if it's up, and if it's and if it is indeed of garbage, you don't want to hear it. Hmm. Bible says, "Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world." This is Christ speaking. This is the Messiah speaking. He's saying you need to teach what I told you to teach. The apostles' doctrine is the doctrine that's uh, that's authenticated by what Yeshua taught. But nowadays, people are saying and they're regurgitating what they hear these men and women of so-called God saying. And this is why we have to try the spirit, see the whether whether it be of God or not, because what's coming across to the people is not all true. It's not all righteous. It's not all just. Some people are mixing a jambalaya of, 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 of you know, saying of, 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 of politics, perversion, and then a little bit of the gospel. And people are eating it every week. And all they're doing is getting weaker and weaker and weaker because they're listening to a devil speaking and spitting and hollering and hooping on a mic with great volume coming through a speaker. Hmm. I'm about to get up out of here, but I've got to share something else with you. Let's look at John 10 and 16. John 10 and 16. John 10 and 16. Beware of these spirits and these false prophets 
Beware, beware, beware. They can have any type of title. They don't have to just have a title as a prophet, but they're false prophets. They're, 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 they're spirits that's not of God, antichrists and spirits that oppose the gospel of the kingdom. We're looking at uh, St. John 10 and uh, 16, verse 16, 10 and 16. Hallelujah. See here on God Core TV, we believe in walking through the word. Hallelujah. Because we know that we have hope in Holy Scripture. Watch this. John 10. I, I want to start at verse 15. As the Father, let me go up a little bit. Let me go to 14. Christ is speaking. He says, I am the good shepherd. And know my sheep and am known of mine. In other words, I am the good shepherd. I am the one, the only one. This is Christ speaking. Just like he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Only he has the authority to say such. Nobody else, not you, not, not nobody, your bishop, your apostle. Listen, only Christ has the authority to say upon this rock, I will build my church. The Bible says, unless the Lord build the house, the labors labor in vain. Tight, but it's right. You don't hear too much of this nowadays. But I thank God for using me, for calling me in this end time to be used as one of his hitters. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Verse 15 says, as the father knoweth me, even so know I the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. How many of these leaders are willing to lay down their life for any of y'all? Let me help you. Zero. None. Nada. It ain't going to happen. But they get preferential treatment. Lord have mercy. Help us. This is the part I really love. Verse 16. Christ says, And other sheep I have. I got that. Other sheep. What? I thought it was just us. Our, our church. Our, our denomination. Our organ. No, 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 no. You got it wrong, my ninja. You got it wrong. Christ says, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold, and one shepherd. Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it up again. Then he talks real greasy. Watch this. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. This commandment have I received of my father. Listen, only Christ could speak like that. And as a man or woman on this earth, you and I can only speak like that if we are empowered by Holy Spirit. We are empowered by Ruach HaKadosh. We are empowered by Holy Ghost. That's the only way we could speak with such boldness and conviction. Can't speak that way being religious. You've got to be real. And if you're real about it, you know that it's all about the kingdom. Because if it's kingdom, it will bring them. No need for gimmicks, scams, and flim flams. You feel me? Yes. Woo. I'm loving this. Other sheep I have. Don't you know, there's some folk who God is using for his glory, or there's some people, there's some groups that God is going to use in this end time that you, you don't know about. I don't know about. Let's just, let's just use the hip hop community, for example. Christ says, I have other sheep that's, that's rocking with me that, that you don't know about. Just, 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 just food for thought. What if part of that fold is the whole global hip hop community? Hmm. The greatest communication on the earth. 
for the greatest end time revival. Oh, am I prophesying? The greatest hip hop revival ever known to man. Where people are being taught who they are because they're learning to be hip to God and who God is through the word of God. And then they're able to hop by having overcoming power by receiving the raw cock of death through hip hop flavor and hip hop culture. Through lyricism, through b-boying, through, through graffiti, through the art of DJing, emceeing, fashion. Wouldn't that be awesome? If there was such a move that God would get the glory through the global hip-hop community. Whoever would have thought of such a thing? But nah. The other side of that is all of these ignorant religious folk. Oh, they're rapping up here. They're rapping, they're rapping is of the devil. Oh, they're rapping. I'm not having this rapping. This rapping is of the devil. No rap for our youth. You know, our, our youth rally. Your whole youth department is rocking to all type of profanity and perversion. They know all the lyrics of the top hip hop artists mainstream. But you're, too, you're just too ignorant and too just downright stupid to, to understand that your young people are dying a slow death. And it's not just them, but so are your adults. And so are the seniors. They're dying from DOACP. What is that, Apostle? What's, what is that about it, Bishop? Dead on a church pew. But you're the pastor in charge. But you're powerless. You ain't got no power. You ain't got no vision. And nobody in your community even knows your name. But you're the strong hole and the strong hole wearing church clothes. Type of this right. My God today. Oh God, you're using me in a mighty way. One more scripture and I'm out. One more, one more and I'm out. Let's go to Mark. I want to show you the spirit of today's modern church. The mentality. I want to show you in scripture where people are. Now, if you don't mind, allow me to preface this before I read it. The disciples are on a mission with the Messiah. They're with Yeshua, the real Jesus, the Christ. And this takes place. Now, you know, they've seen Jesus work miracles. They've seen him preach, teach. They've seen him, you know, lead by demonstration, not just by verbalization. They're being discipled. Uh, they're being mentored. They're, they're seeing firsthand how to do, what to do, what not to do. They're learning from the Messiah. That that's what we ought to be doing today. By the way, if any if, if there are any preachers watching, any leaders, or anybody professing the faith, professing to be a follower of Christ, we're supposed to be discipling others. We're supposed to be teaching and training. But we can't do that if we're living a double life. Hello, somebody. Can't do that if we're tripping, dipping, and slipping. Come on here. We can't do that if we're if we're busting and fussing. We're trying to plug every hole. Come on, somebody. We just have far too many male and female hoes, young and old hoes, and hoes in church clothes. We just got too much going on. Too much, too much, too much. In the marketplace, hoes everywhere. Just hoology. That's just that's just the whole mentality. Hoology. Holiness is still the way. I'm telling you, holiness is still the way. Tight but it's right. So here, here is the mentality of the modern day church. Watch this. So when the gospel according to St. Mark chapter 9, I'm going to begin reading at verse 37. Christ says these words. Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me receiveth not me, but him that sent me. Divine order. You see this. Verse 38 says this, and John answered him saying, Master, uh, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and, and he followeth not us. Woo! I, I got to pump the brakes right there. This disciple says to the Messiah, we saw somebody casting out devils in your name, but they ain't rocking with us. They're not, they're not part of our jurisdiction. They're not part of our denomination. They're not part of our church. They're not, they're not a member of our fellowship. 
That is the spirit of this modern day church. Everybody have this ownership of stuff and, 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 and they're so they're so tight and, and, and they're so 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 concerned about having a monopoly on everything without realizing that what you're doing is very minute. What you're doing is really not as important or as huge as you think it is. You think it's mega, <laughs> but it's more like Sega. Sega Genesis, not Mega Genesis. It's more like Sega Genesis. It's a game. Ain't nobody studying. Ain't nobody got time for that. You think you're big time, but you're not. You don't even have big time. You got small time. And it's hard to be big when little got you. Woo, that's a word. What does Jesus say in response? Jesus said, forbid him not. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. Listen, don't be like this presentation, this false presentation of the church, whereas you're so caught up in the look and not the context of the holy book don't be so caught up don't 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 be so don't be so caught up in the mentality of this modern day presentation of church which is far from what Christ established this is not what Christ established there are many spirits that are operating in the earth in this day and time many mouths are running Many people are saying stuff and doing things. Many people are gathering and assembling, so-called in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua. But there are spirits that have crept in. There are many false prophets, many false prophets leading, quote unquote, mega ministries. Many false prophets have, have these apostolic and prophetic networks. They're on Zoom and online. Many false prophets have these schools of ministry and this and that. There are many witches and warlocks operating as men and women of God. And so many people are being bamboozled because they're not flowing in Holy Ghost. Type but it's right. This is why the enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy and annihilate God's hitters. If you're like me and you go hard for God, you're all God core, and you ain't studying this foolishness. You know what I'm talking about. Spiritual warfare is real. It's not an annual thing. It's a daily thing. We deal with spiritual warfare because the enemy knows that we are a problem to his kingdom. Going to church all the time and talking about church and church is stuff. And it's a, Satan ain't even stuck. They don't care about that. But when you know who you are in God and you possess the power of God and you're sold out for the kingdom of God, and you're not one of these religious prostitutes. You're not allowing demons and devils and men and women manipulate you spiritually or physically or naturally or psychologically. The enemy knows your name. Well, I pray you've been blessed by this God Core WordCast session. I am J.E. Cooper, a.k.a. BBJ, and I'm honored as always to minister unto you. I pray that you have been better than blessed and that your family is blessed. I decree Psalm 91 over your entire household and on behalf of the prophet Shani J and myself, as well as the God Core Kingdom Power Movement Church, a.k.a. The Bounded Church, all of our saints and friends. We want you to know that we love you and we appreciate you for coming by and spending time with us. Don't forget to share this message with your family and friends and to subscribe as well as follow us on Godcore TV via TikTok. That's G-O-D-K-O-R-E on TikTok. You can also follow yours truly, your cyber shepherd at the real BBJ. That's D-A-R-E-A-L-B-B-J-A-Y. Of course, that's the little at sign. D-A-R-E-A-L-B-B-J-A-Y on IG. That's Instagram as well as Twitter. I love you and I pray that you're better than blessed. I want you to win. And I pray that in this end time that you will 
Try every spirit to see whether or not it is of God. Don't be deceived by what you see, by what you hear, by what people say. And don't feel some type of way when the crowd is going to the left, when God is saying, no, you go right. Go Yah's way. Not the world's way, which is y'all's way. Go y'all's way. Rock with God. Stay with God. Stay focused on Christ. If you keep your mind on Christ, the Bible decrees and declares that he will keep you in perfect peace. Your mind needs to be stayed on Christ and what God has for you to do in this time. There will be many, many, many situations that will take place in the earth. Many announcements on the news. Many announcements on world news platforms. But listen, God got us. And if we are in his hand, no man can pluck us out. I have not seen, nor have ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men the things that God had prepared for them that love him. Don't give up. Don't give in. You go win by any means necessary. Keep the faith and keep it moving. Shalom.